Welcome back to the Callus Podcast. We are in this transformation series, uh, third segment with Blair Nichols. And I uh, just want to kind of continue the conversation. If you have not listened to episodes one and two, uh, be sure to go back and catch those. Uh, I'm just kind of, I probably have way too many questions just because I'm curious about this world that, that Blair lives in and the evolution of it. And uh, so, so we'll, we'll tie this up here in this episode, but uh, to ca- kind of carry on on what we were just talking about and he was giving some, uh, you were giving some advice about uh, just kind of how you can work with, uh, take somebody's story and, and Molly's movie and things like that. Uh, and, and in my head, I, I was just wondering, like, is I, is there a mix of, like, if if I'm one of, if if I'm you know one of your, if if I'm in your agency, is there a mix of, hey, there's specific events or like a target audience that I want to go after, and maybe there's other events that have kind of requests that put out, out requests to to you guys saying, hey, who here's what we're looking for. Uh, how, how does that kind of match up? Like how, how do, how do you ensure that, uh, right events or, you know, right people getting booked and all that? What, what does that kind of marriage up look like? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, speaking agents, speakers bureaus, a lot of times we think of ourselves as matchmakers, right? Cause right. corporations come to us, conferences come to us and say, Hey, we're looking for, they might have a speaker in mind. And sometimes they might not have the budget for that speaker. So you need to propose alternatives like this person is a great subject matter expert on that same topic. And this is what they their, you know, topics are. This is what they speak about. Or you give them like, hey, we just need someone that can talk about diversity and inclusion or marketing or sales. And you can give them like options within a price range. So that's what speakers bureaus really specialize in, like more of that kind of matchmaking. They've got a speaker for any any need that a buyer, so to say, uh, would need. You know, we're a little unique in the Sage Agency that we're the only agency that can offer you free speakers all the way up to those headliner speakers um, because our speakers, as we've been talking about are more interested in the opportunity that a stage provides to help grow their business than they are just about getting paid. So we can be a real resource for event planners in that same way where they, you know, they might have a budget for one or two of their headliners. Those are going to be their big name speakers, but, but they've got, you know, different breakout sessions and other spots to fill. And so we can actually be a one-stop shop for them um, in that regard. But on the speaker side, it's interesting, you know, you mentioned that as well, you know, in the bureau model and the agency model, a lot of speakers, they'll speak to anyone as long as they can pay their fee. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they might have preferences and they might know that there are certain audiences that resonate more with them than, than others. But in my experience, if the organization is willing to pay their fee, they'll go and speak to them, you know, and that's that's kind of what they're there to do. That's that's the gig. Um, so they're not they're there to get paid and tell their story or share with, you know, their expertise with that audience. And and, and the good speakers customize it to that audience, understand that audience and make sure that their message really resonates with what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's not really you know, if they've got the they've got the time and the money, then that's who they'll go and speak to. Our clients are more concerned. I mean, they're not going to speak for free to any audience. So, so for us, there is a little bit more where we do have to match make. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, with our speakers, they they know they want to speak to a certain audience. They might want to speak to a health and wellness community, or they might want to speak specifically to finance professionals or lawyers or accountants. They might have target audiences that they're really looking to reach so that's where getting a speaker for free can happen because you know the speaker wants to reach that audience you've got a valuable stage or a community a lot of associations you know are great targets for us because they're responsible for educating and and and, you know sharing content with their members and that's really their mandate um whereas a company you know isn't isn't maybe going to be as as much of a great target because they're just one one company and they're looking for a certain subject so it really depends you know for us we have to be more conscious about who our speakers want to speak to because Mm. if they're not getting paid you know it has to be an audience that makes sense for them so it in Mm. in, you know with so there's a little bit of a different kind of math or calculation that goes into that um you know but Again, the best speakers, no matter who they speak to, are going to customize. And then speakers who 
are highly strategic are just going to be really targeted on the, the the events and the places where that audience is going to gather yeah no that's interesting and, and part of my curiosity comes from i'm actually on a event planning committee for an industry organization um that that is in the manufacturing world i'm, mm-hmm. I'm not actively in manufacturing still right now but uh, we talked and, and they wanted me to kind of stay on the group and I'm not actively in conversations or decisions on who's, who we are necessarily booking for us, uh, like the main segments, but what our conversations as a group tend to be on these monthly calls as we're planning this, you know, annual virtual event now is, uh, some of the some of the smaller like breakout type stuff like you're referring and that tends to be um, hey who do you know like you know what what business owner or or you know leader is in our network that we can call on which you know isn't a isn't a bad way to go about it mm. but I get the sense and I and I'm you know I, I need to have I'm realized now I need to have a conversation uh, offline with the lady that kind of spearheads this just mm-hmm. to see if someone like that is aware uh, um, because I I have no indication that they're using, um, you know, a a service or or anybody to kind of help steer some of this. And maybe they don't want to, but uh, it just, it's just interesting from my experience, you know, having sat through several meetings where it's like, well, maybe if we can't find this person, we'll just change this topic from X to Y. Yeah. Uh, You know, there's a lot that goes into event planning as you know, but. Well, and I think that's why it's such an interesting business model because the event planners that work with us don't pay anything. You know, there's no fee to work with us. You know, our our clients, our speakers are the ones who pay us. So we are really like that's our big goal this year is getting the word out about our service because I don't think a lot of meeting planners are aware of us. So they might know where to go when you've got a budget, but they're afraid to go to a bureau or an agency if they don't have a big budget or they are they, you know, they don't want to have to spend money because they know that they're only going to get service or be able to work with them if they do. So, you know, I'm trying to get out there and make sure more meeting planners are aware of what we do because I think it is special because our speakers want to get out on stages. They're looking for, you know, subject matter experts and they used to have to rely on those referrals or hunt them down one by one to find that speaker that maybe yeah. then they need to kind of twist their arm. So we are unique in that regard. And and because that's our business model, you know, we just have to continue to get the word out and and educate more people in the market that we're that we exist. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad I get to be a part of that with uh, having you on here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I appreciate it. Absolutely. I think it's I think it's pretty cool, you know, and like I'm I'm glad because there's times where people would reach out to us at the bureau and I'd get all excited cuz I'm a salesman, you know, I only I'm working on commission and mm. then they're like our budget's $1000 and you're like, "Oh, mm. oh man, you know, like, well, I guess this is one is not going to be, you know, and I and I want to mm. help. I don't want to mm. just say, "Well, sorry, I can't work with you." Like, mm-hmm go away. Right. You know, I love that anyone can come to us with a huge budget, no budget, and we can at least give them some options. And a lot of times they're, you know, just thrilled that we've got options for them. So I, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. That's cool. So as we, as we kind of start to wind this conversation down, two main things that I, that I like to uh, kind of end with mm. um, one and, and I'll say them first and then we can hop in. But <laughs> okay. the first one is, kind of what are you excited about going forward like what what's uh maybe it's something that's we're absolutely going to make this happen in 2021 maybe it's beyond that uh and the second and you've already given some good advice uh so maybe maybe we're just kind of reiterating some things but i like to end with hey what you know to that earlier career um you know high achieving professional emerging leader type person uh what what advice would you give so We'll, we'll kind of cap things off with that. But when you look forward, what, what are you most excited about right now? I love this question. And, you know, we did talk about this a little bit maybe in the first episode, but just to reiterate and just what I'm excited about is the bounty of opportunities that are going to be available for speakers and event planners in this new world where virtual has become a very viable option and not to be afraid of this hybrid model. You know, we were at a retreat last week with 50 people and on site, very safe as we could be. We're tested, Mm -hmm. all of that good stuff. But we also had about 
50 or 60 people on Zoom, you know, coming from their home so they could be part of the experience and we could facilitate between the two groups. And I'm, we're really excited about how events are really going to be hybrid in the future. I'm imagining kind of people on stage and then walking into a smaller room and then interacting with, you know, the people at home for like a private Q and A, you yeah. know? And so they, I'm imagining events in just a very hybrid way and how that allows uh, event planners to scale, sell virtual tickets, sell in-person tickets, create different experiences for people on site and at home that are different and, and special. And I think that's something that's definitely going to be happening in 2021 because I know in-person events are already getting booked for 2021 Um, probably going on right now when you're listening to this episode Um, and I'm excited about you know how we're continuing to to grow our agency and get the word out and and hopefully be able to serve a lot more people and provide them with great speakers um, and not make them search all over the internet to find free speakers for their events or just rely on those referrals Um, so I think that's probably my my top uh, answer to number one. And number two, you know, no matter if you're an entrepreneur or you're, you know, just a motivated professional and you're growing your career, it's never too early to start figuring out your message, what your expertise is and what problems you can solve in the world, in business, in general. You know, you never know where your next job is going to come from and you never know when you're going to be needing to look for your next job or figure out a business on your own. So I think by starting to, you know, share content, if someone's asked you a question more than two or three times, write a blog post. If this is a conversation that you could be a mentor to someone about, write a book. Mm -hmm. And if people are asking you for that, then that's something that you, you know, really can get out there in the world and you don't know what's going to come from that. But speaking as a side hustle is never a bad thing, speaking or doing anything like that as an addition. So I just encourage you to, you know, be thinking about what you're passionate about. And it might not be your day job. It might not be what pays the bills, but it could be. And, you know, it could turn into a business. But if you start putting those steps in place and start figuring out your message now and start getting out on stages, whether it's your school, your where your alma mater, where you came from, your kids' school, your church, any organization that'll have you and that you can add value to their community, uh, you know, you'll be surprised what can come of that. So I'd say go ahead, take that first step, start putting those plans in place because you never know where it may lead you. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Hey, third bonus question. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I meant to ask this earlier and just came back to me. The like, so when you think about books, macro level trend, what is that? Is, is the number of books being published or however you want to phrase that? Does that seem to be upward trend, downward trend, or just kind of all over the place from time to time? What, what's... You know, I was I would have been one of those people, even starting out in publishing, that would have been pretty cynical about ebooks c- completely taking over, uh, and and it just being a thing, it just being kind of a, a like less books are being published because less people are reading, and there's more yeah. video. I think more books are being published than ever before. Wow. And I think, you know, like they've, we've kind of hit a, a plateau with the balance between eBooks and re- and hardcover paperbacks. Some people really still love books. I, I, when I moved to LA eight years ago, I was like, I'm not going to buy any more physical books. I had so many books. I can't fit anymore in my, in my home, you know? So I started getting everything on my Kindle and now I'm like back buying paperbacks and kind of nostalgic for the books. So there's yeah. a nice balance to that. So I think there's definitely always going to be more books and we see more people self-publishing than ever i think where books are going and what's really cool is with tablets with more interactivity with the books so you're going to see a lot more video books you're going to see books that might have quizzes and assessments and and polls embedded in them you know so that they can become a lot more especially in an educational space they can be a much more you know interactive tool for engagement for learning and even if it's fun, you know, I I think that's something that I would love to see happen more because we've got the technology, why not not leverage it and make it something really cool? So uh, that's what I think is happening in publishing and probably more what we'll see in the future. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And I was just wondering because I do, and I've, I think a couple of, uh, of the guests that I've had from Advance Your Reach have been tied to, you know, a recent book. Uh, and I've just interacted with a lot of people in this space that 
uh, a book is either something they're working on just released or, you know, it's somewhere in their story. Mm. And, you know, it, it, I guess the thought is just coming, you know, because I, I do both and I, I have six books stacked up on my desk right next to me. Yeah. Um, I've, I've spent a period of my career on the road and had zero time for reading and did audiobooks and yeah. tried the clipping feature and digital notes and stuff like that. I just never felt the same as having a highlighter or a pen in my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, 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 you know, there's value in both. Um, my favorite audio, my two favorite audio books are the ones where the author actually read, you know, actually like narrated. Um, and you yeah. get a little bit of extra content in there from time to time that, you know, a little fill in the blank. Sometimes it's language. Sometimes it's, you know, actual additional story context, but no, I just think that's a, you know, it's continue to be fascinating to see where that grows and, and his, like you're saying, you know, in, interacting, uh, in different ways, adding value in different ways, engaging, uh, different generations and things like that. Oh, absolutely. I love when the author is, is the, the audiobook narrator as well. You definitely get a lot more flavor with right. that, a whole different experience. And I'm, I'm not a big audiobook person cause I'm also a very visual person. I like to like, you know, be able to see and kind of imagine in my mind. And sometimes if I'm listening, my mind will drift, but mm. you know, sometimes it's easier. Some people are better with fiction or better with nonfiction if they're listening and whatever works for you, I would just say, you know, don't give up on trying to consume it in some way. I'll do podcasts and I'll do other things like that. But traveling is often when I get most of my reading done on a plane. So I've been excited. I've gotten to do a couple trips already this year. I'm hoping to travel more in the future as things open back up because that's really when I would have that captive time where my phone can't distract me and I'd get to read. So Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that some more this year too. That's awesome. So for those listening, what's the best way if they want to get in touch with you or just see you on social media or something like that, what's the best? Yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm I'm Blair Bryant Nichols. I think I'm the only one. Uh, you can definitely message me, connect with me there. Um, if you are a speaker and you'd like to uh, f- get a free resource from us, uh, we'd love to share that with you. It's our digital event checklist. A lot of times people ask, you know, what do I do? I, someone was invited me to speak on their stage and how do I prepare and what do I ask? And I think it's important to uh, you know, be prepared and to sh- illustrate that you're really going to customize and make a great presentation if you want to land that stage or whatnot. So go to adventurereach.com forward slash send gift because we're sending you a gift, send hyphen gift, and you'll get that digital event checklist. So yeah, LinkedIn, get our free digital event checklist, um, something something great to just use in your next conversation with the meeting planner. And otherwise you can check out adventurereach.com or inside the green room podcast.com and, and check out our resources there as well. Fantastic. And I will have links to that in the show notes, everything you just described. So make sure Absolutely. it's in the show notes. Well, Blair, it's been a great conversation. I really appreciate your time and uh, just excited to get this out there. Thanks, Hunter, and and good luck to all of you, and and hope that you have a very wonderful 2021.